Okay. Should I stop smoking? Hello, everybody. This is Captain Sweep of Planetary Recorded. Guardians Media, and I'm here with Cameron McSwirly. And uh, we haven't spoken in quite a while, and I know that Cameron was working on some very important information in terms of self-governance, sovereignty, and understanding the underlying laws around what, how you can protect yourself uh, from the government these days. And so why don't we just jump into that? Give us a bit of background of what you've done, and then tell us a story of what has occurred to you lately. Quite the story it is. Thanks. Um, so what have I been doing? I've been a Eucadian. It's uh, Eucadia, the unique collective awareness of the data and information analysis. So it's an AI system. It's an estate system. It's a new and complete system of law. I've been working with that since 2011. So I've come up with, I've got about 22,000 estate files now. So I am my own government. Um, it's formalized through my will and testament. I have been working in that direction for quite a long time and it's a lot of work but uh, the idea is as uh, opposed to maybe the free man on the land sort of thing where people want to isolate themselves away from all of that in the colonial empire it's a step back through it and it challenges the trust relation of all of the governments of office that are chartered around the world and what it does is it says no one stands between you and creation or you and God or however you want to define that. And uh, what I've done more recently is I've become a global citizen through the World Service Authority in Washington, D.C. Uh, it runs under the auspice of the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights. And part of that is that we can choose our own government. So what I've done is I'm, I've acquired this global government passport and global political um, asylum, which has been validated through what's happened to me more recently at the hands of the Justice Department. And uh, I don't think they're very pleased with the fact that I question the establishment. So I dared to question a judge. I dared to question the continuity of the legal system, of the justice system. I dared to file complaints against the RCMP. I dared to stand up for my rights and for other people's and for those that I don't even agree with. You know, I might not agree with somebody, but I'll defend to the death the right to say it. And uh, I think it was George Orwell, he said, you know, true liberty is being able to speak the truth even if people don't wanna hear it. And so I've kind of moved in that direction, you know, in the short story uh, for quite a while now. And as it's all coming to fruition and I'm about to launch a network and I'm about to issue the will and testament and finalize all of these things, I've set up a series of dominoes, if you will. And I'm unable to knock those dominoes into motion myself. So it goes back into what's happened with the Justice Department. And uh, that is a story all in itself. But the ball is in motion now. And I think that this is something that can help a lot of other people. It's uh, it's a lot of law, it's a lot of history, it's very complicated. People like to listen to the story sometimes, but I watch them glaze over and they go, I don't know what any of this means. I hear words, but I'm not sure it's even English. So uh, that is a whole other story and probably like a three or four hour lecture of how that works. But um, needless to say, it is obviously a challenge to the establishment and it's a step into self-sovereignty uh, that's recognized at an international level. And it's a big threat to the current power structure. So I learned that lesson the very hard way, which I'd be happy to go into because- Yeah, like why, why don't you tell us what's happening to you recently? Because it sounds like you're under attack. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the thing. I've been victimized by the Justice Department is what it sounds like. And it's not so much that the, you know, the auspice of the law is wrong or the foundation and the proper tenets of law is wrong. It's that there's a fraternity that exists amongst these people, amongst law enforcement and these people who have corrupted their positions of office. And so when I see that, I call them out and they don't like it because they don't want me to be the referee. But what are we supposed to do when we're met with the egregious face of domination and corruption, the defalcation for malfeasance in office. It's a terrible thing. So I'm able to issue a notice of divine dishonor and it changes their trust relation. Takes a while, 
and they thought they could kill me. So uh, I was arrested on false allegations on um, June 4th, and I spent uh, some time in remand. But I got out, thank God, because I know my rights and I understand the process. Uh, a lot of people don't, and they're not articulate enough or controlled enough. Uh, you know, they'll kick the cell door and they go into hysteria and they can't think. So I was able to get myself out of there, thank God, with the help of some friends and uh, a very good friend of mine who I knew the officer, I knew the sergeant knew who she was. So he was able to contact her and she got me in touch with a lawyer because they wouldn't give me a lawyer because they were trying to disappear me. They thought that I'd overreact when they arrested me at gunpoint and Thankfully, I didn't, so they didn't shoot me. Um, my lawyer has been very forthright with the understanding. He wants me to know very, very for sure that uh, they were trying to kill me and that they've killed a lot of other people by doing this. And I, I know some people in the area who have lost people to this same treatment. And uh, although it's happening to me, it seems to happen to Aboriginal people a lot more. Um, there's very much a genocide alive in this country right now. And they tried to get me with it. And it seems like their sticky little trap is that you have to overreact and you have to do something wrong so that they can misuse their police powers. Um, there's a lot of bad DNA in the police department around here right now. And it needs to be exposed. And the process that I'm working on, the best protection that I can have is to tell people. And the best thing that people can do is uh, to educate themselves and you know, contact me or, um, you know, check out the website, which is almost ready to launch. And it's a, it's a, it's a full network. And uh, it's not Zuckerberg. And it's not Google. But it uses a lot of the same systems. Um, yeah, I was arrested and unlawfully detained. They searched my house. They said that I threatened a ministry worker, but I record my phone calls. So they recovered some of these recordings and they found that I didn't threaten anybody. And if I know that my calls are recorded, why would I threaten somebody? So uh, they took me down with a high risk takedown and uh, apparently I'm incredibly dangerous. This is the story. Um, they took all of my hard drives. They took my computers. They took my laptops, my tablets, all my cell phones, everything. Luckily I loaned this to a friend so I got that back and uh, I did get some of my stuff returned, this laptop that I'm on at the moment. Um, they might think that things like this right here is a 3D printer. So they don't like that I can manufacture my own stuff. Tent clips to magnet motors, right? So I'm also working on those sorts of things. I have an autonomous magnetic motor that I'm developing and it could be more destructive than, than an act of terrorism because it would change the power structure, literally. What happens if you don't have a hydro bill anymore? What happens to the provincial revenue if you're not on the hook? You got to go to work to do your thing, to pay all your money so that maybe you can get two weeks of vacation before you die? I don't think that that's why we're here. So um, so anyways, I've done all of this stuff and built this estate so that I can look after myself and my family. And uh, there's very subtle changes to the way that it works. Like when I die, I won't leave an inheritance. I'll leave an heir. Um, when an office comes to me and tries to exact power and authority over me, I challenge their authority. I challenge their jurisdiction. And there's ways that that can go back through the system until there is proper oversight and people who are very hardworking and very well-intentioned and they see this and they don't like corruption, right? The Judicial Council of British Columbia will look at a judge if you know how to get their attention. And, um, so this is a very uphill battle for myself. Um, I lost my son in the process. Um, I lost my, my girlfriend in the process. Um, I'm on bail conditions right now. Uh, I have a curfew. I'm not allowed to go into town. Um, when they took my computers and everything, I do architectural and mechanical drafting and design for a living. So my business has been sacked. Uh, I, uh, I'm being targeted, absolutely. And it's a fascinating experience to know that you're being targeted opposed to thinking that the government's watching and not knowing. Like, you know when they are because they have their rifles pointed at you and you're in a cell and there is no mistaking what's going on at that point. So uh, somehow I've survived and maintained my mental health through the process, which has been very difficult. But 
at the end of it all, it looks like what we've got here that I've kind of put together uh, is going to help people with the vaccine passports. It's going to help people with a government that tells them how to live their lives. It's going to help them to realize that they actually have the authority and the ability to have the authority without trying to be a free man on the land and creating a vacuum around themselves. It gives them the ability to interact with a foreign entity at that point. And it creates a jurisdictional challenge that says you actually can't, I'd, I'd be the equivalent of like, um, let's say a Chinese national. You're not gonna extradite me. My government won't give up on me. Um, you don't actually have authority over me. It's a, it's a, just to kind of draw a generalized line, something that I think a lot of people might be able to recognize. Um, I can also derive funds. So once this is happening, I can fund my government, just like the Canadian government does. Brand new government vehicles, huge splashy police budgets, you know, a wasteful spending, which I don't intend to do, but um, it's all for the operation of the estate. And Canada's system of government is an estate. We have a governor general under the crown of England. The queen is our absentee. So although my name, my estate's name is Cameron McSorley. I don't operate as my governor general or as my executor general. I'm an apostolic mendicant minister of a planet potentiary. I'm here on official business and to tell the story and everything's tentative. I don't wanna cut deals. There's no war, there's no aggression. There's no any of that. It's peaceful relations. And that way I'm not the one who's starting the fight. I'm the one who wants peace, you know? I don't wanna overturn the power structure of the country, but by my very acts of creation and you know the conceptualization of different systems, it is a challenge, but it's a challenge that gives other people an option out. You know, a lot of people want an option, but they say, this is the best system we've got. It's the only one we've got. Well, I've created a bit of a lifeboat and it's open to other people to have it and to have it for themselves and to learn how to do it. And it's very, very simple. So simple that it hides under our nose. Can you, can you share a bit of that process or is that, do we have to join the network for that? Um, no, I could probably show you. I mean, I've got oh, just throngs and throngs of data, but I'll show you this. This is my coven. Practicum distinguis calum, the coven of one heaven. So what it is, is it's the tenets of, of law for my estate. Uh, I've got, what else do I have here? This is just what I have right in front of me at the moment. So my live born record. So these are just printouts. I've got a promised land record. You don't exist on earth and not get promised land. Like where are you supposed to exist? In the, on a boat in the middle of the ocean? I have a share certificate. So I'm able to derive funds with these things. I'm able to have my deed for my land with these things. I'm able to have my own foundation trust. So like this is my trust numbers and everything are on here. So these are these are all through the uh, Great Register of One Heaven, which is a Eucadian society. So I'm a society member. So I've got my trust information on here. And everybody has their own unique identifiers based on a survey of when you were born. But it doesn't follow the Gregorian calendar. It's much more accurate than that. It's a deeper survey. So it is a superior survey. And it challenges the trust relations that were kingmakers back in the day, back in the Vatican, the papal bulls of Unum Sanctum that chartered the world. So learning history, moving through these processes has given me the ability to do that. That's my estate. That's my legal society. It was recognized, uh, I think it was Meads versus Meads, uh, 2001, I think it was, uh, Queens Bench, Alberta. And uh, the judge recognized UK as a new and complete system of law, law in Canada, which is a fascinating conclusion for them to come to, um, but it's very true. And that's kind of what I meant earlier about hardworking, well-intentioned people who want to see the proper function of law because it is the continuity of our civil society. And as fraternity members uh, that infiltrate these systems for their own gain, uh, it is eroded. And so, so that's something that needs to be observed. Um, this system is available online. The Eucadian uh, network has started to come back up more recently. Um, the books- what's, what's the website? The What's website? the website? 
uh, One Heaven, I do believe. There's a bunch of them. It's a really big. There's 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 like millions of pages of text. It's a lot. But um, one of the things that I'm working on is instead of saying read this big huge book because there's like twenty of them. So instead you, of doing you that, wrote all that. No, I didn't write this. This was written by Franco Collins in San Susi, Australia. He spent his life developing this system so that other people could utilize it. And now I'm spending my life utilizing it in a way that shows a roadmap of where it can go. Um, okay. As far as I know, there's only three other functioning Eucadians in Canada at the moment. So it's a very, very small group. Um, Do you know who they are? Like, Could we get them together to have chats? We likely could at some point. Um, I have some of their contact information. I have reached out to them in the past. I've had a few people get back to me, but I think one of the things that happens is people kind of jump on a bandwagon and then they don't follow through. Like I've been doing this since 2011. So I'd say I'm following through on it, but it's, it's difficult because I lost my nine-year-old son and I lost my girlfriend and I lost my business and I lost my freedom. And unless somebody's willing to endure that to do something that they know is worthwhile, it's very easy to question, is this worthwhile? And I think that, you know, to take on that suffering is, is, is to alleviate it from other people's paths. And I can't give up now. So, but these things are, this is part of it, right? This is my governance. This is my estate. Then I have my global government passport and my global political asylum, which protects me from the abuses of other governments. How can you take political asylum or refugee status unless you have a reason to flee? Life's good, bills are paid, job's nice, economy's fine. Why do you wanna run away? You can't just do that, right? You can't just run from your country for no reason. Um, so somehow this has all come together and happened for a reason and it seems to be working. And I have a great amount of faith in that. And that's one of the tenets of Eucadia is that there's no war in heaven, right? Between demons and angels, there's no war in the ether of existence, it's in the minds and hearts of men. And it's in these, as I mentioned, these kind of fraternity members, justices of the peace, corrupt judges who have been put into office to exact a policy that is not the mandate of the organization. Um, they don't want this. <laughs> so that's my threat currently, that I'm under threat of, of, of this system and even taking this interview could put me in danger. But I do know that one of the best things I can do is get the message out there. Mm. And once the website that I'm building is up and running, it'll be much more accessible to other people. And instead of having to learn all of this knowledge and dedicate decades of your life to it, um, it networks it together into a very simplistic structure that says, if you want to do this, here's what you need to know. And this is how it works. And so it breaks it down because some people, they don't have the capacity to memorize these things or understand these things. Um, when I first learned of it, I was working with the U.S. Marshals deputy and he would sit and smoke cigarettes on the weekend and explain all of this stuff. And I knew that he was onto something, but it took me about two weeks before I finally realized and it clicked that he is speaking English. It's just terms that I've never heard before. So now I'm in that boat where it's hard to explain this stuff sometimes uh, without uh, a practical education behind it some lawyers understand it and they go i know about this stuff but nobody does this and 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 it and it gets the cogs really turning so i know that it's not a pseudoscience it's not a bunch of malarkey it's very real or they wouldn't have arrested me and they wouldn't have done these things but um why did they take my hard drives my computers my laptops they said that i threatened a ministry worker so they came in and did that they were looking for evidence of threatening communication that's what they said on their faulty search warrant what do you need for that? Computers that have dust on them? Do you need my backup hard drives for that? Doesn't make any sense. Um, it was all a setup. I got set up. I got big brothered or um, Mr. Bigged or something like that. It sounds like it sounds like it's exactly what happened to Jim Townsend. Yeah. Oh, very much. Yeah, Jim, man. I forgot about Jim. That is very much. And I believe Jim was working on something that was more along the lines of the free man. And he was trying to extricate himself from that system. And I found that that is in fact a problem because if you extricate yourself from legal structure, 
you become achromatic and you can be colored. You can be painted with a broad brush and you have no legal immunity. You can be treated like a squirrel. And unfortunately, squirrels have more rights than we do in a lot of ways. You go in the front yard and you shoo the homeless person away. Not too bad for them. They're trespassing. You got a squirrel on your front yard and you shoot it with a BB gun, you could be in trouble. Mm. So sometimes I, I, would, I was wondering if, if we could work together to create a planetary guardians training program to, to yeah. utilize what you're talking about and to integrate it with all the other sort of uh, educational needs that we all need. Right. But I think what you could add is, is to build a new paradigm. Right. I've been working on, you know, the inflow matrix, which is all the parts fitting together, but in a framework, it's lacking yes. content. It's lacking <clears throat> the substance of the other knowledge sort of originators who figured out different pieces of the puzzle. And I think that you have the law one and that connects like to the health one that connects to the educational one that connects to the economic one. It connects to all of them. But yeah. the law is the prime reference point. The law is the function of the registries of the contracts. And the best thing that I found the next evolution of technology on this world is the evolution of blockchain. So everybody looks at cryptocurrencies and we play it like stock market. But what if that crypto wasn't just money? What if it stored your files? And what if it executed contracts with a registry? Then that's how my estate works so that the AI runs it all. Now, that's the thing. This is an AI system. It's an artificial intelligence system. So once we plug that into the blockchain, I can use it to derive funds without going through a third party issuer, notices to the International Bank of Settlement for the operation of the estate. I can have an infinite supply of money to operate this thing, mm. which is great because then anybody that's part of the system can have social welfare, but not just like we know it today in a much better way, in a way that treats crime as a mental health issue, in a way that creates uh, solutions based on people's needs instead of using CRM and targeted advertisement systems to sell them somebody's crap that they don't need on a blitz buy because it's cheap, not a wish thing, right? A way that says you have a skill that I need and I have knowledge that you need and you have something that they need and it creates a network and it markets us to each other in a way that allows culture to unfold, you know? What's the difference between a musician and a doctor? Well, when you need a doctor, you need that doctor, but without the musician, how is art and culture supposed to thrive? Mm -hmm. Countries and nations and people who have been able to dedicate themselves to the development of their culture rather than the necessities of survival have flourished mm -hmm. all over the world. Guns, germs, and steel, I think that's the book to read on that one, mm -hmm. but um, it's big. It's a lot of reading. <laughs> so <clears throat> what kind of support do you need right now in terms of what you're going through i i know you felt quite probably alone and um not many people know the situation that you're going through and what you've gone through uh i just know from planetary guardians to me like we need a larger umbrella we need a brand yes. that what, what i the main thing is looking at each issue that we're dealing with and creating a web TV show and a team to go to the end of that issue and come up with the solution, come up with the remedy. Like all these issues are connected. We need to create a media network that is looking at all of them, but connects them all, integrates the knowledge and has something like this at the background to show that we have a winning strategy. We have a way out of this where <clears throat> we're not continually going to be decimated by these larger government forces. Absolutely. And in, so in the creation of a network or in the creation of a society or something like that, it falls under current legislation. Unless you run it as an extra provincial legislation or a registration of a business through a foreign entity. So one of the things that my state can do is it can sanction the activity under its own legislative bodies so that Planetary Guardians Network isn't governed by Canadian law. Mm. It's governed by international law. It's governed by mm. contract and treaty amongst the people that are in it. And um, you can't oppress. I can't come up with a law that tells you how to live your life. That's not something that I'm allowed to do. Mm. You do that. And so your network could exist inside of the network that I'm building as it is a foundation and it has its own legal standing. So it is, it is a way out and it does require a media presence. And I have been isolated. The isolation is very difficult. 
um, being in cells, being in jails, fascinating experience and not interested in repeating it. And they didn't actually break the law. So what's really going on in this country, you know, that validates my political asylum. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating. Um, yeah, no, like I mentioned too, mental health uh, has been taxed. It's been very difficult. Um, what do I need? I think mainly is to share in what I'm doing for the people that are interested in it and to have help. I mean, I have a farm that I run by myself and it's great because I do a lot of great stuff. And then I look around and I'm like, There's nobody here to share this with. So that's kind of painful in a lot of ways, but, um, I'm building myself as always and like building my body and my mind and, you know, build the empire. Uh, even when there seems like there's no hope in it. And I think that the message too, is that there is hope in it and that there is hope in it for other people. There's never no light at the end of a tunnel. Maybe there's just a bend in the tunnel and you haven't gotten there yet. So, so what about, um, because what I've seen is a series of bases, planetary guardian bases, where there's training and, and people yeah. understand there's a code of honor that we follow. And um, just wondering if I started sending some people up your way, maybe like um, to, to do some training and to uh, maybe help you with the farm. Is that something oh, that would be useful? Absolutely. So one of the things that I came to, uh, I was doing this work with a, a very good friend and a love of mine. And we came to the conclusion that what these things are, like you're referencing, we were calling them resource centers. So each resource center represents a different group of people with a different ambition. And they do have a cross compatible nature and there is a code of honor amongst them. The network is a strand that connects them all together. And in the heart of that strand, there is an orientation. There is a server system and the AI helps to create a homogeneous network. So let's say you have a group of people that are a resource center that are blacksmiths and you have a group of people who are carpenters and that's what they love and they don't want to do the other thing. Well, the blacksmiths can make very nice ironwork that the carpenters can use to finish their building. And the carpenters can build some very nice tables for the blacksmiths. And amongst the trade in that network, it's based on crypto assets and smart contracts and the system balances itself. And so that's very much what you're working on, but it brings into it, like you said, the litigious basis, the legal entity and the process, like which registers, what do you have for registers? What are we registering? You have the inflow matrix, but then does it account for births, deaths, and marriages? Does it account for land titles registries? Does it account for, and can it account for those sorts of things? Can it account for education? Can it account for healthcare? And that's where the litigious basis comes in because we're not saying we're creating a network that still rides on the auspice of us being Canadians and we have to ask these people if it's okay. You don't have to do that anymore. If you have a system, you say we need an infirmary because we're having, you know, the each one of these resource centers should be able to treat its own people. Why not have a physician on hand? If you can afford it, if we can have a doctor and pay them $500,000 a year to be on standby, why not? Why don't we have our own medical facilities? Why don't we have our own research facilities? Why don't we have our own network and infrastructure hubs with our own servers? It's not unfathomable to say yeah. that we can use the existing systems to use existing blockchain networks, to use existing CRM and marketing systems, to use existing communication systems. I'm wearing a Huawei watch. I'm being watched probably by Chinese central intelligence. They literally know what my heart rate is. They know how my health is. And I'm like, I don't care. Some people are worried about being watched. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to tell my story. So the other thing I'm doing is I'm writing books. I've got, uh, I've got about five stories uh, out there now that are getting pretty organized. So inevitably those will publish. They're going to be short you know, little bathroom readers. I don't want to make, I don't want to write one of these. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I see this is, is the beginning of, uh, I mean, what I have is the inflow matrix operating system. That's the operating system. Then the new paradigm toolkit, which is card sets, game boards, maps, processes, and software. 
And I think that what you have could be put into card sets, right? The languaging for the jurisdiction, the, like the, what are the main 50 words in law that you have to know and know the definition of and to make a card set so we get to understand it because a lot of the time we get lost in these white documents that sort of overwhelm the mind, right? And it's just, we need to simplify what we're doing. And I think a lot has to come down to what is one word and what is that definition? Yeah. Um, what is also, the relevant process? There's the school of conscious communication, which is teaching it. And then there's the planetary guardians, which is the media system. And then there's the very secret plan, which is the web TV show that connects it all together. Hmm. And as you know, you, the, the, web, the very secret plan has been around for a while. Uh, you've been in it uh you <laughs> i'm working on it everyone's been it but i've lost i've lost over 10 hard drives of footage nearly all the footage i've ever taken since you've known me has been lost. really yeah oh no yeah see that's why we need central uh yeah. data and storage yeah. systems so that when you back it up into the cloud it's your data nobody else has it it's blockchain based so it's encrypted it's fragmented throughout a network nobody can access it but you there's really no system that's more secure than that currently. One of the other things that I've kind of come to understand about blockchain technology is that it's an egg. It's an incubation process for AI. Now, the big thing is when I say AI to a lot of people, they go, oh, Terminator, Skynet. Oh, it's bad. And they shy away from it. And I say, it's the new world order. And it's either theirs or it's ours. Yeah. And if AI is going to dawn, one day it will. And it will be the greatest adversary man has ever known. It'll be like the Antichrist. People be like, this is great. And it'll destroy us if we're not in control of it. And this is how you're in control of it. Wow. Otherwise, who's in control of your life? Now, if we want to look at like a microcosmic, macrocosmic example of that, who governs your mind, mm. right? The government, the control mm. of the mind. And we are so, so conditioned that we think that we're free of it, but we're not. And as soon as you dare to step out of line and you red pill yourself, you find out how deep that rabbit hole goes pretty darn quick. Mm. And a lot of people are terrified of it. They'll start that journey and they'll turn around and they'll run away. And uh, it's a fascinating process. Buy my book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking we're coming maybe to the end of, of just this portion. I'm very... Uh happy to be back in contact with you i know that uh, we shared some glorious moments long long ago at the awaken festival and and since then have been going our, our merry ways and I, I think we both have big pieces of the puzzle that when we put them together uh this larger idea that's that's reformulating this whole new system is coming about and i i if anyone has watched this i i think you you will be very interested in hearing more from cameron because you know, the, the documentation, what I would like to go through is because I'm coming to the point where my own tools and stuff are about to enter the world. And so okay. I don't, I, I don't want to put it within that economic system. I would, I would love to figure out with your assistance, how to build this, this, this new idea that we need to build together. And so if we can go through a process, maybe week by week, and see how to do that and pave the way for the people to follow us. Uh, maybe yeah. we start with me and we, we just go through this. We, we create the process together and then that can be sort of like the entry process into planetary guardians uh, mm -hmm. because we, we need to have a, you know, the, it's all about jurisdiction, right? It's all around boundaries. It's all around language. And um, I believe both of us have different pieces of that puzzle that once puts together, I think could be very, very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Yeah, and that's the thing is that what we are is currently we are nodes of humanity's evolution and we are far apart from each other. I'm in the central caribou of British Columbia. I think you're down on the coast, Vancouver area. Yeah. Yeah, and so I know other people and we're all rather far apart from each other. And that has a fascinating representation. It's emergent in nature. It's emergent in metallurgy. It's emergent in the chrysalis of a butterfly, the imaginative cells that eat the nutrigenic soup of what was once a destructive caterpillar and turn into something that breathes anew mm. and evolves. And that's, I think, what we're doing. The network that I'm building needs a communication system that is a media platform. And that's something you're doing. 
Mm. And I, in my life, cannot do all of it. It's impossible. <laughs> Look how long both of us have spent with our own puzzle pieces. And it's time to put those puzzle pieces together. And I know that there's a lot of other people out there who are discouraged because they feel like they're alone. And that isolation is very, very difficult, but they're not alone. And there's a lot of people out there that'll keep each other on track. I mean, even this meeting, you and I haven't spoken in, geez, it's been months, eh? Like a year, maybe? No, I mean, even, even more than maybe two or three years, Mick. Really a long time, you yeah. know? And, uh, and so this needs to happen. And it's not a rally. It's not a protest. It's not asking the devil to change. It's saying we've come up with a new way of being. Mm. And it's not a turning and saying, you did something to me and carrying on a fight that distracts us away from our purpose. It says, I have my purpose and it can help you. And you have your purpose. And we're like the colors of the rainbow. We flow side by side. We don't cross and get all bad and fall off our ways. So other people need to know that we're out there and other people need to come forward and say, this is what I'm working on. And believe me, I have felt crazy. About a year ago, I started trying to check myself into adult mental health. And I was like, am I losing my mind? And they were like, no, you're honing it. Like you're figuring it out. Like I'm just, I hope you're successful in what you're doing. And I'm like, God, I feel alone. So no drugs, uh, no antidepressants, nothing like that. I deal with myself pretty well. I endure myself every day. I'm sure you know what that's like. Eh? So what, we what all need be, to do it. What, what could be... Um... Is it Acadia? Like what's, what's the, how do you spell that? Eucadia, U-C-A-D-I-A. So the unique collective awareness. And I could give you a real brief description of what that is. I myself am a unique collection of awarenesses. I can change my vantage on something and it'll change my perspective. And in the shift of perspective, a different persona can take hold and work it. You can love something or you can hate it you can run from something or you can embrace it and so in myself i have to endure myself in that then you and i come together as an example just two people and we share our unique collections of awarenesses and we become an even larger collection of awarenesses if i have an idea and you have an idea and we share those we both have two ideas and so we grow and the unique collective awareness is all around us. We are the dreamer. This is the fundamental principle of my estate that life is a dream. Only the, it's kind of like Rumi said, only the sleeper thinks it's real. And when they awaken by like when, you know, like to death, they find that grief isn't what they thought, right? It's not what we thought. There's rules to reality. Like there's very like, this is real and there's a shared unanimity to it, but you can bend the rules of reality. And we've all had that. You ever slow down time? Wow, time's going slowly. Wow, time's speeding up. It's a perceptual function, but it can have a huge change in the world around us, the way that we live our lives mm -hmm. and the way that we interact with the world, the perception that we have. Um, so then that becomes part of the DIA, which is the data and information analysis. Is what do we do with data? How do we organize our thoughts? You know, intelligence in my belief is structured consciousness and that's organized chaos in a lot of ways. And if we don't have a way to organize ourselves and our minds and our feelings, we can fall into that chaos and we can lose ourselves. But if we go the other way and we endure it, you know, on the path of life, you can't go away from, um, you can't go away from hate, but you always have to go towards love. And so the trap, the path through it is to go through it. You've got to go through all those uncomfortable things, right? So, um, yeah, the unique collection of awareness gives rise to that. And it creates a better being. And the being is longer lasting than me or, or you. Like, what's the, the stuff that we're working on. What's the DIA? The data and information analysis. UCA, DIA, Eucadia. It's an AI system. So the DIA is what I look at as the blockchain based strand network between resource centers. So every resource center, let's say for example, you have a bunch of people who smoke pot and you have a bunch of people who don't like pot smokers. You create a chartered city, if you will, or township or whatever you want that functions around weed culture, which is rich. Weed culture is rich. 
Other people don't like it and they don't have to be there. It's like if you go to a festival and there's an A camp, you want to drink, you go to A camp. Well, what happens when you get a whole bunch of people together who love alcohol? Alcohol, bars, taverns, pubs, rich culture, music, enjoyment, fun, dancing, all this sort of stuff. Some people are terribly adverse to it. You put those people in that situation, they say, I'm going back to AA. I'm going back to Al-Anon. They react poorly. So you don't mix them. They're like the rainbows. They flow side by side. The colors don't cross. And when they do, you get the whole you know, white light of it all. But um, creating these resource centers, creating this strand network is going to give us all the autonomy to live the life that we know we want. Some people will go into it and say, I want to be a cyborg. And we'll have like Gattaca cities. Some people will say, I want to live an agrarian lifestyle. And that's what they'll do. And they'll hand make fabric, which is beautiful. Other people want a robot to do it. And if they build a cool robot, it's going to do a bang up job too. So there's something to be said for every culture, every myriad of way of existence, every kind of unique collection of awarenesses and each independent awareness of each person and part of each person, right? So bringing them together in a meaningful way, creating a strand network that connects us all together, having a uh, a political foundation for it. It's um, a good example. Emily Carr. So the Emily Carr Foundation and the school, it's dedicated to her life's work. So at the end of your life, your network will be co committed to the continuation of your life's work. Otherwise, what's it do? Fizzle out? What's mine do? I already have a foundation trust that'll carry this thing on in perpetuity after my death. And if I create a functional AI network, it'll run forever. The great works of our lives, if they inspire and help other people, will last forever. If they don't, they fizzle out and go. We are having a short technical difficulty. We will soon return to the normal I'm state. Not interested. I want to make muffins but I wanna make muffins outside of provincial jurisdiction. So I wanna winnow my own grain. I wanna breed my own yeast. I wanna make it myself. Some people's life work is in that direction. I have a couple of friends of mine that are chefs and the only thing they wanna do is garden. They wanna know exactly where their food comes from because then when they practice their craft, they know exactly what it is. Mm. It's not a Cisco systems purchase. Mm. Okay, I, I, gotta... I could just go on and on. This is all my rough introduction to the whole thing. But yeah, I think maybe a weekly thing, we could do topics, something like that. Maybe we could get some questions. People want to know something very pointed that helps me to focus it into what people are asking. Because otherwise, it's very broad scoped. And there's a whole lot of Latin and there's a lot of history and you can't really capitulate it all even in four hours. It's too much. I got you. I got you. We'll just, uh, we'll get the layers done. We'll get the simplest parts. We'll get probably a series of documents. Maybe if you can start to think if you were going to string together the series of documents that are all important, maybe we can do one document per session and sort of build a bit of a, uh, a manual around that or, or just like, because I got to do the same thing with my maps. And it's just like what I'm doing is like which maps go in which series and connect to build the whole thing, right? So if we could sort of like this map is my number one map. I start out with these five spaces as being the, then these spaces are in all the other maps. And so to me, yeah. it's like distinguishing that to be a fifth dimensional being kind of, but to really distinguish between the group space and the community space. And I think what you have, right, is, is like the group space took over the community space and it's taken it over through this legal languaging that is just a, a front, which has become reality, but in fact, it's a fraud, but we don't know that. And so what you have is the real stuff and then we need to distinguish that from the other stuff and then give the choice to people go, which one do you want to participate in? And that's going to be the real exactly. sort of long-term philosophical debate around how do we move into something where our species is actually going to live together in a good way versus the insanity of going the way that we've been going. And so to me, at some point, it's just going to be a very logical choice by everybody once they understand what the difference is and how they've been fooled and how they can, you know, create the, the right sense of languaging to create the life we want to live. Exactly. I, I, I look at it 
as a step in your inflow matrix. Say again? I think the inflow matrix could definitely handle that. Yeah, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, let's bring structure and content together and create a process that uh, has us on, a, on a, a victory path. I remember you did uh, the Sweeps School of Conscious Communication. <laughs> and it was very eye-opening for everybody. And it's always stuck in my mind as the orientation system. Because when you orientate yourself into the network, you don't just go in and say, well, what am I doing here? It asks you, what are you doing? What is your isness, not your yeah. business? I go to work and I do a thing and this and that. But what I do in life is very different. And that can help people more than my job can. I can design you a house and get you permits and design a machine that does something. That's fine. But what are you really up to? What is it that you need and what is it that you can give to the world? So it's a statistical breakdown of each independent person. And Google already does that. And Facebook already does that. And it uses it for marketing purposes. But this thing, the inflow matrix going through proper registers and giving you your estate back and saying, there you go. Now you can operate. You would do well and statistically in these potential resource centers, which one would you want to go to? And it might give you some funny ones that say, you know, if you're a chef, you actually want to be on a farm. Mm. That's not something I ever thought of, but it's the isness of their particular business. Mm. Um, the inflow matrix is a way of organizing that. It's like a game. So it's fun for people to play. But at the same time, it has a litigious foundation and it registers the information factually and legally in a sense that gives the person the autonomy that they need to function. And they don't have to sit there and fill out forms and do 10 years of paperwork. Mm. It becomes unnecessary. So, mm. but it's about playing the game. It's about playing that inflow matrix. It's about going through the conscious school of communication and uncovering yourself. And it's like the Grecians said, you know, the philosophers back in the day, the hardest thing to do is know thyself. It's very mm. difficult. So if we had tools to help us with that, it didn't take decades. We'd probably all be a lot better on it. I think so. Well, okay. Again, we could probably talk forever. Uh, oh, great, forever. great to see you and wonderful to hear from you. And I'm, I'm so appreciative of what you've done because I know that, you know, I can't go further and I haven't been able to go further without all the work that you've done. And I think that the, the whole Me species too. owes you a lot of uh, kudos. And uh, let's see about episode two next week. I, I look yeah. forward to it. I love it. Yeah, thanks. And like your work too has, uh, has, has guided and shaped a lot of my thoughts through the process because it's relevant. It's very relevant. And it's, it, it needs to become functional. Like you said, you're going to put it in the world. I'm going to put mine in the world. And it's about putting those puzzle pieces together in a functional way. Because otherwise, yeah. we're all just trying to do it ourselves. Yeah, it's a bit look big. Look forward to the next one. It's a bit big. Okay. See you, everybody. Thanks for listening in.